Okay, what we have here is is the sole use of bobby pins to hold your loop up in the right spot. You want to keep the snare off the ground if you possibly can. Next time we come through here, we might have snow up to here. If that, the bottom loop I feel should be off the ground if at all possible. Okay, what we've got here is an old dry wash that the Cayutes moved down the valley through. I've used this little oak tree to uh, anchor the power snare to. And I've got, again, I've got my, my soft wire just wrapped around once around here. That won't, won't uh, hurt the operation of the ram. Once the animal gets caught, he'll, he, will, he will pull that loose just immediately. And we have, we have a, a, a nice 10-inch loop here, 11-inch loop. And the, the, the old coyote comes right through here and, and we'll get him. Okay, you see how I've used the hair pins again to set your snare up and hang it out, out wide. You've got one hair pin right here, and I've got one on onto this here tree here. We have lots big enough loop here. The coyote's going to come through, and okay, you've got your kite when it comes back through. most of you trappers are going to wonder how we're going to use a power snare out here in the middle of the bald prairie. Well, I've caught a lot of coyotes, fox, and badger in old badger holes. The main thing is, as the coyote comes through here, there's a, there's a little bit of, of grass here, there's a fence behind me, and this is their travel way from, from one valley to the other. The coyote normally normally checks out old, old badger holes. I'm not sure whether he plays with the badger or what, but if you put some good lure down that hole, you will catch a lot of fur. Normally what I do is, is I, I use an iron stake with an old snare on there and, uh, and I stake it right down. Generally, after it's sad, I, I just throw a, a small amount of hay on it. And that's not to hide it from the animal, that's to, to hide it from, from anybody passing by here. Now, if you pour a real good liquid bait down there, and you put your snare back in the hole, and what you're trying to do is to fill the whole hole with your snare. So when the animal goes down, he's going to get it around his neck and he's going to feel it and back up. Set off the ram and you've got your animal. how we've got this in the center of the path we have we have we have we have the loop about 11 inches and about 12 inches off the ground any kite coming through here is going to stick his head in there 
I've got the drag thrown off in the bulrushes here. Okay, what we got here is a is a spot where the Cayutes are coming off the ice going up a draw here. I've got the ram anchored to some roots back in here. You've got yourself a nice location if you want to get down and take take a look right through here. Okay, the advantage, as you can see here, is once we've caught a coyote the, and it's been killed by the ram, you, you can reuse the, the same location over and over. Uh, ordinary snare, as many of you know, uh, once you catch one, he chews the area up so bad that you're never going to catch another coyote there. Okay, we're going to go over here and set a couple more. There's there's four or five coyotes coming through in that, this area, and we want to pick up two or three more of them. Okay, what we have here is a road that was used by the jumper hunters, and they've they've got a trail all packed down here. I, I've used a small oak tree to 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 fasten my ram power snare upright to, and I've got it right in the the center here. I've hauled in a little bit of scrub here to fence them down. So when he's coming through, he's going to get her. And on the other track, I've got a, I've got another one. That's the biggest, biggest shortcoming I've seen to most, most young fellows starting out to snare is they don't use enough snares. They'll have a cow as bait, and they'll only use one snare or two at the very most. They should be using five or six. And here again, I, I've got the ram fastened up to a few small trees. Okay, what we've got here, if you remember a while ago on the film, we showed you, we shot this, this setup here from the other end of the road. It's going to show up a lot better if we film from this angle this morning. I had one snare over there on that side of the road, and, and I had one up on this side here. We got, we're using the uh, 364 uh, steel cable uh, because as you can see, there we have, we have lots, all kinds of deer track here. 
and a 366 force won't hold the deer by the foot. What we've got here is a fox that came through, got it, but wound up, set her off, and we got a real good hike there. Okay, what we've got here is a game trail that's rarely, rarely used. As you can see, the, I caught a coyote here. The beauty of the ram power snare is that it kills its catch, allows you to reuse your location, those good neck down locations, time after time. Uh, with the power snare, you have no water head, you have no hide damage. Uh, we, we've got a location here where I, I'm using a deer guard because there is the odd, odd deer come through here. This location, I only pick up one or two coyotes each year, but year after year. It's a place where you're never going to have anybody find it, all, almost impossible. And I just come through here once in a while and I got a few rams in here. But year after year, I know that the coyotes, when they come through this ravine hunting, I pick up one or two every winter on this here trail. Uh, ba basically, all I've done here is uh, I've got the ram wired up here. Uh, when he gets caught, he's going to break that loose. Wrapped a couple of 14 strands around here to hold up your snare. I've got a hairpin holding it open there. This one will net me another coyote before the end of the season. This is relatively early in the, the season yet. Here you can see a, a real good fox here with the number two ram, the fox model that we designed specifically for fox and animals of, of that size. What we have here is a small half acre patch of trees. Uh, if you can see around us here, we're in a little hollow and there and there's it's wide open prairie all around all around me. I've done this for years here. Uh, when we go after beaver in the spring and in the fall, I bring two five-gallon pails or four five-gallon pails of, of, of paws off the beaver here. And I drop them in here and I get coyotes and foxes coming through here. This is another real good method of, of catching only the species of animals you want to catch. There's no reason to ever catch anything else except what an animal you've set for here. If you notice in this location here, this is, this is another point I want to bring up, was you should always have a backup set. In a location like this, you see I've got another one down the trail here. I possibly could have had another one over here. And I've got two more over on that side. The, the, the bait pile is just down here about 30 steps away. Uh, when you limit yourself to one or two power snares per location like this, you're really selling it short. If you keep these bait stations here year after year, the, an the animals are going to filter through here 
and not only singly, but they're going to filter through here in family units, especially in the fall of, of the year. It's not uncommon to catch doubles or triples at locations like this. should talk about is, is cable size. You've seen in some of the shots where I've caught fox and coyote with very light cable. The ram gives you that option. Any trapper that has, has used snares extensively, uh, I, 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 have, I have trappers coming to my shop that, that that's the feature that, that they, they really appreciate about the ram, is it enables you to use lighter cable. We use a 3 64th cable. We've used it for two years now. I've never had a deer held by the foot. It, I have lost a few coyotes in it when I started out. If it's used in very dense scrub uh, what, where the coyote can get around a tree or a, around something, can break it off. This is a shot of the type of terrain we are trapping in here. This little patch of bush that you see in the foreground here is where we, we, we just caught the fox. Knowing your animal is 99% of, of your success. Knowing that the animals are going to come through here. We've got a series of ridges here. You've got hay fields over there. All that comes together at this small patch of bush here. Therefore, funneling all of, of your canine animals in here.
Okay, we're on top of a valley here, and there's a fence line that runs down here, and it acts like a funnel. The coyotes follow the fence line, and they follow it straight down in the valley. When I set this snare, there was no coyote tracks here. But I knew, since it's a good location, and the coyotes were going to come down through here, that they were going to get caught here. So I set them here, and it's the neck down place. It's the first place to set. The snow is getting deep now, and the coyotes are not going to go around this trail. They're going to go straight down, the easiest path. What we've got here is a path I made in the fall in September. I use my weed eater. The coyotes come up and down this road here. I have no way of using a power snare on this old trail through here. So what I do is, is I made this trail in the early fall with the weed e eater. I usually catch two coyotes on this trail each winter. Uh, I try to set back off the road here so nobody will be able to just easily see it uh, when I catch, catch a coyote. Uh, this is one of the, of the things I've been doing for a number of years. Once I get a trail like this, I want to pull them coyotes off that road. Uh, what I, I use is beaver tails. I keep them frozen all, all summer long in the same freezer that as I store my fox and coyote urine. There's, a, there's quite a strong smell of, uh, of, of, of urine on them. Once I cut this trail out in September, I'll throw three or four of these along the trail. Why I use beaver tails is number one, if I used a big chunk of meat like a beaver carcass here, it would attract ravens, magpies, and also attract humans. Uh, beaver tail does not rot very easily. Uh, the coyote and fox in that time of the year are in their transition period from uh, pretty much a vegetable plant matter diet to animal matter. The beaver tail, I've had them dragged out in